Hey YouTube, Bernard here and welcome back to our Shopify app development tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be teaching you how to display Shopify products using pure PHP and Shopify API. By the way, if you haven't watched our previous tutorial, we highly recommend you guys to watch it before proceeding with this part because in this video, we're not going to be teaching you, we're not going to be showing you how to set up your Shopify app. So in this video, we're just going to be showing you a real quick tutorial on how to display Shopify products. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's open our project. So in the previous tutorial, as you can see, we have made our project files. We have installed the PHP generate token PHP API call, which we haven't used this yet. And I, I have also saved my access token. So I highly recommend you guys to always save your access token if you have if you are not yet using database and such. So always save access token for development purposes. Also in include INC folder, we have functions.php and we're not going to touch it at all. Okay, so let's open our install.php. We're not going to touch it. We're just going to make a new file instead. On your sublime, let's control N to create a new file. And then uh, let's type PHP and then something like that. And then let's save it as index.php. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to require the function file. So require once and then INC folder and then functions.php. And then the next line is like the request variable and then let's get the get variable from Shopify. And then inside the get variable, we're going to create a new variable and get the key from get variable, which is called HMAC. I'm really sorry. My hands is really, really weird right now. And then the next thing that we're going to do is to declare another variable. There's going to be a lot of declaration in this video, so I apologize. Serialize array and then serialize, serialize, and then the request variable. So what we're going to do is we get the value from get variable and then we store it in a request variable. And then after that, okay, let's fix this. HAMC get the HMC value, store it in HMAC variable, and then after that, we serialize the RA uh, request. And then the next variable is, again, request. We're going to fix the request variable, and instead, we're going to array use array diff key. That's how you spell it. And then request under uh, comma, and then a new array which is the HMAC, make sure this is the same HMC and this one as well. And then we're going to be putting a new value of this of empty. So make sure you time it correctly. That's how you do it. Okay, so to explain this, we serialize the RA request and then on request variable again, we get rid of the value of HMC because we already have the value over here. <clears throat> And the next is we sort the variable. So to do that, let's call case sort function and then let's use the request variable and then close that. And then this is where we're going to use the token variable. And then let's make it a string and then another variable over here for the shop URL and then let's make it a string. So we have two variables, token and shop. So we're going to paste here the value, the token that we gathered in the last video. So let's go over here and then we have access token. And then let's copy this. Make sure you have you make sure you save the access token that you generated in the last video. So please, please, please always save access token. That's really important. It's like the password. And let's paste it over here. And then the next thing we're going to do is to type in the URL of our store. So from what I can remember, we have weekly how dot my Shopify, my Shopify dot com. Hopefully it shows my cursor now because in the last video, there's no cursor. <clears throat> Alright, next, let's declare a new variable. Let's call it collection list. And then let's um, make a call from Shopify API or let's just say the function inside functions that PHP. So let's say Shopify 
I think that was Shopify call. And then we're going to use the token variable. And then next is the shop variable. So make sure this these two variables has your token and then the shop URL. And then next, let's um um uh, what's that the admin slash api and then the date and then I, it's october so that is the latest date for um, for the api versioning yeah and then slash let's call custom underscore collections that json and then next parameter is let's make a new array and then what type of uh, process you want to make or is it like a get or delete or post or something like that so let's use get instead next is we're going to use again collection list variable and then we're going to decode the result from this function because once we use this function it's gonna process this URL and then it's gonna return a uh, JSON script so we're going to decode that and convert it into an array instead so let's make collection collects collection collects collect no 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 it's collection list collection list I'm sorry um I forgot uh, <laughs> collection list underscore custom collections and then uh, let's use no it's actually it's pretty wrong it's not custom collection it's supposed to be response <laughs> uh, I forgot I'm really really sorry uh, okay um and comma and then Jason yeah I remember now Jason pretty print okay there you go perfect okay next we're going to make another variable let's call this collection underscore ID and then uh, variable collection list I'm sorry collection collection list and then uh, angle bracket no uh, brackets and then uh, the key which is the collection there you go collection ID no it's custom collection ah. <laughs> custom collections and then another key over here because we need to get zero the the first key uh yeah the first key inside the array and then id because from what you can see this is like a multi-dimensional array so inside this uh, okay let me just show you instead how it looks like because if we open this okay so we're now here in our dashboard so since we have the weekly held on my shopify.com so actually this is like a tip for me okay so to test your api you can just type in your url your your store url and then paste here the admin api 2010 custom locations that json or you can type in like slash products that json something like that and it will show you all the values you have as you can see this is like a json script which can be converted into uh an array so since we have products json let's convert this to custom underscore collections uh dot json and then paste that and then as you can see we have uh one and then two we have two collections which is the front page and the test collection so in our script over here we have the custom collections so as you can see this is the first key custom collections over here and then the second key is zero which is this one which is this array over here which is a group of data and then we're going to get the id variable which is this one so the value is 9380642895 so that's what we're going to get and then after that we have now our custom collection ID over here. It's stored in collection ID variable. So the next thing we're going to do is to make another array. It's like equal array function. And then let's make collection ID. And then 
we paste over here the collection ID that we get from custom collections. I hope I'm making sense. Uh, if you have questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to explain to you guys because uh, Shopify API is really a little bit complicated, especially if you're new to this type of thing. Uh, when I first got into this, it's really confusing at first, but as soon as you keep writing codes for Shopify apps, uh, you'll get used to it. So yeah, next thing is create a new variables, collects, and then Shopify. Let's make another Shopify call and then use the tokens or you can just copy this if you're a little bit lazy like me. And then let's just replace this instead of admin API 2019. Let's just call um, Clex JSON. And then over here, let's replace this. Actually, you can just copy this one instead. Instead of creating another variable. There we go. Let's get rid of this. And then next is collects. We're going to convert it again from JSON to an array. So that's actually how it works. You call Shopify call, process it, convert it to JSON, and then you convert it into an array. So that's how everything works from what I can understand. And then make sure you get the response. And then over here we have again JSON pretty print. There you go. Okay, now so the next thing we're going to do is to actually display the products inside this collect ID, this collection ID. Uh, from what I can remember, it is the ID that we have. So collection ID 938642815. So that is the collection ID that we have in this variable. So we're going to use that to display the products inside that collection. I hope that makes sense. Again, uh, for each and then, oh, sorry, um, collects as let's replace it as collect instead so let's get rid of this we don't need that i believe so for each collects which is this one we convert it as collect variable per key each key will be passed in the into collect uh variable and then inside that let's make another uh for each uh, function and let's call this um, collect which is this variable and then we pass the key and the, its value over here so let's create the product variable products is equal to Shopify call and then obviously let's copy this one paste it over here and then let's also copy this one it's just the same process let's replace products over here also here shopify call talk and shop admin api 2019 10 let's replace this collects but instead let's call this products products and then slash and then over here let's mm, crack this by double quotation marks and then dot dot be careful with this one because uh, it happens a lot to have you usually get error by adding this one okay so we have the dots let's paste the uh, value and then uh, product no it's value and then product ID from what I can remember yeah product ID okay uh, so we have products, Shopify call, and then we paste the value over here. And then an array. No, let's not use that. Let's get rid of this. We don't need this. And then I think that's it. Yeah. Let's try to echo products. And then again, first key is product. And then over here, let's call title. There we go. You know what? Let's make uh, a break over here. Break tag. There you go. So we'll be pasting a new line. Okay, let's save that. And then let's open our application. Okay, so let's refresh. It shows nothing. Okay. I believe there's an error for that. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so there's actually an error to our code. Make sure you only have over here the subdomain of your Shopify store instead of putting weeklyhow.myshopify.com. Make sure you get rid of that myshopify.com, just your subdomain. It was my bad, so I'm sorry. In our tutorial, yeah, it was explained over there how you actually can do that. There's actually a, fun a function where you can just get the URL uh, from your PHP. I think it's um, like this, store, um, store, and then like something like this. I think it's request and then the URL, something like that. I'm not actually sure. I forgot. It's been a while since I worked on that. But yeah, subdomain, just subdomain. Make sure you do that, and then let's see if it works in our Shopify app. Let's see. And there you go. Now we have our products over here. We have the collection ID, and this is the product inside the collection. So let's actually see that in our products page. Um, filter by collections. Just test collection. No, it's actually home page. Yeah. And there you go. We have product over here, which is the dog car seat. And over here, we have the dog car seat view mesh waterproof product. And this is our collection ID, if you can see over here. All right, guys. So that's actually how you can display the products or the collection ID using Shopify API. If you have questions, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, uh, in the next video, I believe we're going to work on uh, displaying or storing your access token through database and stuff like that but yeah thank you so much for watching guys if you enjoyed this video if you learned something here make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to my channel subscribe to our channel we're gonna be giving you guys more tutorials on shopify app development this is a series so expect it to have more videos so yeah again thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time see ya